Tonight on Huckabee, American Majority CEO Ned Ryan, Hunter Biden laptop repairman John Paul Mac Isaac, Master Illusionist Joel Myers, Soulful R&B singer Ken Tibbs. That's Trey Corley in the Music City Connection. And I'm your announcer, Keith Bilbrey. And now, here's Mike Huckabee! Welcome, everybody. Happy New Year. Our very first show of the new year, and we're glad you're joining us. Look, I want to try, and I mean try, and make sense of what was supposed to be a Republican-majority House of Representatives starting this week. <laughs> <sighs> While the devil and the Democrats, some would say they're one and the same, <laughs> but I wouldn't say that. But while the devil and the Democrats stand by laughing hysterically, a small group of Republicans who have the math skills of a one-year-old <laughs> have shut down the entire House by their belligerence in wanting to keep Kevin McCarthy from becoming the Speaker of the House. Full disclosure, I supported every one of the holdouts through my PAC, Huck PAC, with maximum contributions. Several have been on this very show. My frustration with them is not because they disagreed with Kevin McCarthy or even expressed their opposition with an initial vote against him. It's that the 10% of the GOP House members who have demanded concessions from McCarthy and received them have then added more demands in order to end their hostage holding of the entire government. I fully expect this level of extortion from Pelosi, Maxine Waters, the squad, and Adam Schiff I expected it from Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzer, but not from authentic conservatives who pledged to aggressively fight spending, hold government officials accountable, and conduct real and thorough investigations into corruption and taxpayer-funded abuse of our liberties. The 10% have claimed to be more conservative, more principled, more authentic Republicans than the 90% of their colleagues who were willing to work with Kevin McCarthy. Now, while the 10% wants to rule over the 90%, and by the way, who has ever allowed that or thought that that's the way elections work? It's a little revealing that some of the holdouts have said in interviews that what they are demanding of Kevin McCarthy is that they get choice committee assignments and a promise that they won't be punished for their attempted coup. Hey, that's not only delusional, but it's very telling. I've been excoriated by a lot of people on social media because I express disgust with a small handful of self-appointed masters of the universe acting as if they are living out a scene from Spartacus. In fact, the movie they most represent is the gang who couldn't shoot straight. <laughs> I reject outright the notion that 10% of House Republicans are standing for a greater principle. If a person is objecting by sheer principle, then one is willing to suffer whatever the consequences for the rebellion. But when a person says, hey, this is about me protecting my position, my role in leadership, and my being able to take any shot that I want to at the 90% of my colleagues and then be guaranteed there will be no consequence other than being rewarded. That, my friend, is not acting on principle. That's a selfish act of a power grab and publicity stunt. And if you reward that behavior, all you'll get is more of it in the future. Now, it's not that I think the small group of dissidents are bad people. I don't. I do think they're being used, manipulated, and led by a few who just love being in front of the camera. I dealt with folks like that in the legislature when I was governor. They enjoy being in the minority because there's no responsibility for the outcome of governing. They're free to complain and point out the failures of leadership. They can boldly proclaim what they would do if in control, but they didn't do the hard work to get in control. 
So they take the easy path of being the againers, the contrarians, and those who can loudly declare the decisions of their colleagues to be squish, rhino, or sellout. When I was governor, I called them the Shiite Republicans in the Arkansas <laughs> legislature. And you probably guess they didn't like that very much. But those whose pride in their perceived purity was easy because they never had to actually govern. There are those who are the starters on the team, the ones who come off the field with grass stains on their uniform, blood and sweat dripping from their faces and exhaustion from the game. But there are some who made the team. They'll never actually get in the game. At the end of the day, their uniforms are pristine. They didn't take a single hit, but they sure know what the starters should have done to win the game. You know what I call them? The towel poppers. Yeah, towel poppers. These are the guys who, after the game, still have all their energy, and they're reduced to getting in the shower and popping their teammates with a towel. And that is as close to the contest as they will ever get. But let me tell you something. Towel poppers don't win games. Starters do. To those who don't like the way the game is being played, the solution is simple. Put down the towel. Do the hard work of governing and become a real player, a starter. Don't tell us how it ought to be done. Show us how much better you can do it. And then you won't be in the 10%. You'll be leading the 90%. And hopefully, you'll regret the day that you were just a towel popper. Ned Ryan is a grassroots and conservative activist, the founder and CEO of American Majority. Its mission, identify and mold the next wave of liberty-minded Americans and get them elected to public office. Since its founding in 2008, under Ned's leadership, American Majority has trained over 60,000 candidates and activists. That's a lot of people. Now, as we all start looking ahead to 2024, the GOP will have to adapt to a new political landscape. If they don't, they'll die. Would you please welcome back to the show, Ned Ryan. Welcome back, Ned. Good to be back with you. A little bit of news going on this week with the speaker's battle. I'm I mean, going to talk weather. Uh, we might as well. Might but as well. <laughs> w let's just get it out of the way because it's it's the 800-pound elephant in the room. Yeah. Actually, it's a little heavier than that. Um, but it's been a disruptive week it has. for the process of trying to govern. You know, I, I I think of the 20. I've been thinking about this over the last few days and watching this play out. At least we're not going to get to 133 ballots, by the way, which they oh, did in 1856. Yeah. It's a two-month process. I really appreciate what Chip Roy has done in, in getting some concessions that I think were important, especially on spending on the yeah. budget. Let's get all 12 appropriation bills voted on individually on the floor. Let's get some conservatives on the rules committee so we get into, uh, amendments voted on individually on the floor. And, and I think this was the moment that you say, okay, we wanted to get a few more concessions out of McCarthy. We've got them. Chip Roy has done that. I think of all those people that think the most principled, honest broker, and I think McCarthy's team has made that very clear, yeah. has been Chip Roy. Time to move on. The other one that I've been very impressed with in this whole situation, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah. She gets it. She understands yeah. that we've got to get through this. Okay, it's great that you got your concessions. Let's get to the 218 votes. Let's get down to business because there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Investigations, committees, all these things need to be formed to actually get down to why the people gave the Republicans the House back in the first place. And to her credit, she was with McCarthy from the from beginning. Day one. She understood that he raised the money that helped people like right. her get elected. She was grateful for that. And, and she didn't want to disrupt the whole thing. She also understood... She's young at this. This is, uh, you know, maybe her sophomore year. Let's get down to business. I think concessions have been made. We're on the same page now. Let's go for it. And, and the other thing, too, that, that people have to be realistic about, and I think a lot of people have lost out a couple of these 20, it was either going to be McCarthy or Scalise. Yeah. McCarthy is the better choice. It's going to be one of those two. That's the only realistic option. Let's vote for McCarthy as speaker. You've got your concessions. Let's get down to the business of the people. You know, there's... Uh... There's so much at stake here. There is. The Republic. Yes. I mean, it's our very way of life it that is. is at stake. It's not about the elections. It's about what happens to our grandchildren. Yeah. And Republicans were expected to do better. 
Are the issues with election day balloting a real problem for us? Are we just not playing the same game? We're not playing the same game. Same game. What do we ought to we, we, do? We've we lost sight. The Democrats have done a very good job of realizing this is about ballots out, ballots in. We used yeah. to be very good at this. In fact, if you want to see what we should be doing nationally, go look at the Florida GOP. Yeah. Uh, Florida used to be a, a Democrat primary registered state until recently, and yet Republicans kept on winning. How did they keep on winning? They actually did a very good, robust absentee ballot chase program, invested $10 million into that over the last six weeks to go out and find as many ballots as possible to get them turned in so that on Election Day, where Republicans actually performed better, it was pretty much neck and neck going into Election Day, and they win. We've forgotten how to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at Arizona, about 65 to 67 percent of Republican absentee ballots were returned. You need to be at 80 or 90 percent. If we had been at 80 percent, we would have won everything in Arizona. But we have failed to do the fundamentals. Democrats are beating us at that game. And unless we adapt to going to the ballot out, ballot in machine again, I, I think we're going to keep losing. So, Ned, one of the big investigations that the House Republicans have promised is to look into what big tech is doing. Yes. Whether or not they are manipulating the information that we get. How big a deal is that? What do they have huge. to do? No, I think it's huge. I, I think the Twitter files have shown what a lot of us thought. There was collusion yeah. between the FBI and Twitter. Uh, censorship, it manipulated the 2020 elections. I think one of the things that, that was very clear on the censorship, we know that 9% of battleground voters in 2020 would have switched their votes if they had known about the corruption in the Hunter Biden laptop. They would have switched their vote mm. to Trump. Trump would have won all the battleground states. He would be in the White House. So censorship's a huge deal. I think the House Republicans, when they get down to the business of the people, They've got to invest, investigate the collusion between big tech and big government. They've got to investigate the abuses of the DOJ and the FBI. Yes. I think they've got to investigate the CDC and Fauci. This yeah. whole COVID thing was an absolute disaster. Yeah. Um, so I think all of these things play into, and, and a church-style committee, again, that kind of ties into the DOJ and the FBI abuses. And if they will be actually aggressive on all of these investigations, that will be something meaningful. Because let's face it, they have the House Nothing's going to get through the Senate. Nothing's obviously going to get through the White House. The most meaningful thing they can do is, first of all, say no. Mm -hmm. We're not going to spend any more. We're not going to do any of these crazy Biden ideas. And we're going to actually have robust investigations. And they do have the capacity to put a speed bump in the way. That's right. Uh, all appropriation bills have to start at the House. So right. they can at least this keep is, it from getting crazy. Well, this is one of the things that I do hope they put some more conservatives on the subcommittee chairs of appropriations. Yeah. That's how you can stop some of the crazy spending that goes on in the House. We're... Just about out of time, but I've got to ask you about what you do in the organization that you've led since 2008. How do you help people become better citizens, better equipped to keep our country on the right track? First of all, I, everybody has to be engaged on some level. We, we try to engage people in running for state and local office, primarily school boards. I think we've really seen, yep. I'm in Western Loudoun County. Oh, I mean, we're ground well, zero with the Loudoun yes, County you School are. Board. More people to run for school board, local office, but also to build that farm team for higher office so we can get good leadership in the Congress. But train activists on how they can be engaged in an effective way, build coalitions, keep their elected officials accountable, but also go next level. How can you be involved in making sure our elections become free and fair, bec becoming a poll watcher, an election officer? There's a lot of things that I think we're all obligated and responsible to do to make sure that we can restore our republic. Because that's what's at stake right now, is are we going to continue as a republic or are we con going to concede to an administrative state and become serfs in what I consider that feudal administrative state system? The republic is at stake. It's incumbent upon all of us to do something in our sphere of influence. Well, you're doing the Lord's work in the devil's it. town, and I appreciate what you're Thank doing. You. <laughs> don't give up and don't lose heart. Uh, for our audience, you can keep up with Ned Ryan on social media and through his organizations. We've got all the links for you in one place. Just head to Huckabee.tv. We'll connect you to Ned and the organizations that he's using to help us keep this country. Speaking of keeping things, Keith has been keeping up with all the rest of the show. He's going to tell us about it right now. Well, next, meet the unlikely founders of Florida-based Revelations Cafe. And later, the old-school soulful sounds of Kim Tibbs tonight on Huckabee. Samaritan's Purse is doing life-saving work in places too often forgotten. I hope you'll help them be the hands and the feet of Christ by visiting the Samaritan's Purse website or just call them today. You can feel good about the way that Samaritan's Purse uses your gift with care and integrity. And the people that you help, well, they'll feel good that you cared. Thanks for opening your heart and making a true difference in the lives 
of people. Well, there is a great new documentary streaming free online through this weekend. And it's about a special cafe that nourishes the body with healthy food while also nourishing the mind and the spirit. Here's a sneak peek at Revelations Cafe, food for the soul. Watch. You have two people that have absolutely no business going into the restaurant business. But for some reason, we were called to do this, but we had no idea what we were doing. The first year was like a blur. Learning new things, adjusting to this new way of life after being a stay-at-home mom for 22 years. The relationships are the part that really wake us up and keep us going every day. How all of this came to be is a miracle. Would you please welcome Christian Life coaches and the proprietors of Revelations Cafe, Robbie and Mia Graham. Great having you guys here. I, I understand the way you met was a little unconventional for people who are now running a Christian ministry. How did that all come about? Well, it was um, a chance meeting in an AA meeting. In an AA meeting? Yes. So you said, hi, I'm Robbie. And she no. says, hi, I'm Mia. And there's love at first sight. What happened? Uh, I actually uh, I uh, was heard a voice in my ear saying that this was the one. And of huh. course, you know, I, I'm i not psychotic and I don't hear voices. So I, I immediately started to question the Lord. And I said, yeah. are you sure, Lord? And then the more he kept talking to me, the more I started to realize that maybe this might be something. But as it would be, I did not do anything. I got up out of the meeting. I left. And as I walked down to the end of the block after the meeting, I was standing there talking to somebody, lost track of where she was. And next thing you know, somebody popped a bracelet on my right wrist. And I turned around, I already knew who it was. And she said, nice bracelet. And she was wearing the same one. And the bracelet said, better together. Wow. And that's how this all began. So Mia, did you have this similar revelation that Robbie was the guy? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I love the honesty. That's good. I did not. Yeah. I did not. I knew there was something special, but yeah. I wasn't convinced he was the one. So how do you go from a chance encounter at an AA meeting to running a restaurant? I mean, were both of you like in the restaurant business? You knew what you were doing? No, we no. were not. I was a stay-at-home mom, and uh, I was pursuing God in my future, when my boys graduated from high school and uh, a cafe was the last thing on my radar. Uh, but I had a vision and I knew uh, the name, I knew the color, I knew the purpose, I knew the menu and um, I didn't think it was for me at first. Yeah. And so I mentioned it to my life coach and she asked me the million dollar question, huh. what makes you think this isn't for you? Mm. And God kept confirming it over and over, and here we are. And, and Robbie, there was a health crisis that sort of <laughs> precipitated the menu for this cafe, which is very unique, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so uh, when Mia told me that it would be a vegetarian plant-based cafe, I said, well, that's a great concept. I said, I'll support you, but uh, it's not my cup of tea. I've yeah. been a competitive bodybuilder when I was younger. Uh -huh. And um, when she said that, I was not in agreement, but I had a heart attack. Actually, in the middle of the gym, I had a Widowmaker heart attack. Whoa. And they were able to get me to the hospital just in time to stop the heart attack. Mm -hmm. And a brother in Christ bought me a book called How to Reverse and Prevent Heart Disease by a gentleman named Dr. Esselstyn. So I read that book, and the more I read it, the more convicted I became, and I started eating plant-based. And uh, what had happened at that point in time, my cardiologist said, whatever you're doing, don't stop. So the, the documentary that, that is on a, and is available for free, people can watch it online this mm -hmm. weekend, what is it they're going to learn? What what do they need to learn? Well, it's one of those um, because we're we're three part beings: we're body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, the documentary covers uh, our faith, and uh, primarily our faith. That's what we really want to drive home: is that it's a spiritual awakening. And then, you know, the Bible is very clear about we take care of the temple. This is the temple where the Holy Spirit resides. So uh, we want to make people more aware of the fact that we honor God when we when we watch what we put in our mouth and then also exercise is another important aspect. And so uh, we hope that the message is one of hope, uh, one of deliverance, one of healing. Um, it's, it's multifaceted. And there's a book that 222 ways or say, says it was always you. What, what does that mean? 222 says it was always you. This book is about our story and how we met. Huh. And it's full of miracle signs and wonders, things mm. that you could never script. 
And before we met, uh, God just put in my spirit to start taking pictures of things. I didn't understand why until they happened and the pictures foretold the story of our relationship. God said, no one will believe you if you don't take pictures. And so I took Beautiful. pictures and they're in the book. I hope people will watch the uh, film yeah. that's available online mm -hmm. for free mm -hmm. and get the book as well. Mm -hmm. For links to see Revelations Cafe streaming free through the weekend and get their book and more, real simple, visit Huckabee.tv. We'll connect you to all the things that Robbie and Mia have talked about tonight. Right now, Keith Bilbrey is going to give us some revelations about what's ahead, and it's not even at a cafe. Keith? Well, get ready to laugh at the news on In Case You Missed It, next on Huckabee. and sign up for his free newsletter and follow at GovMikeHuckabee on Twitter. And welcome back. Now, if you miss traveling because of COVID restrictions, I got good news. Dr. Fauci retired. <laughs> I'll be leading a Steps of Paul Cruz in the Mediterranean October the 29th through November the 7th this year through Greece, Turkey, and Italy, and he won't be there to tell us we can't go. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be aboard a luxurious five-star ship that we have all to ourselves. It's going to be fun and relaxing and spiritually exhilarating. Country legend Larry Gatlin is going to be one of our guest entertainers for the cruise. You can get all the details at thegreatesttrip.com or find the link at mycuckabee.com. Well, from Christmas Grinches to New Year's babies, we're going to recap the weirdest news of the holiday season on In Case You Missed It. Between the blizzard and airline cancellations, a whole lot of people had some tough Christmases. But it won't surprise you to hear that nobody, and I mean nobody, had a worse Christmas than the Grinch. Police in Avondale, Arizona, pulled over a driver who was using the HOV lane when this was his only passenger. Yes, that's an inflatable Grinch. That looks like, is that Trey driving? No, that's no. a Grinch, man. A oh. fake one, too. And the cop said that his passenger was sus. Suspicious looking. <laughs> Suspicious <laughs> looking. Suspic yeah, I got yeah. Seuss, Dr. Seuss. Took me a minute, but I got it. The driver was ticketed and they told his passenger, You're a fake one, Mr. Grinch. You've blown up full of air. Your skin is made of plastic. And your heart's not even there, Mr. Grinch. Oh. Yeah. Well, in the Grinch's Breath. defense, Avondale, Arizona is in Maricopa County. So maybe he thought cheating was legal. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon? Huh? Whoa. The Grinch just couldn't stay out of trouble on Christmas. Police in Traverse City, Michigan, were called to a costume party at the home, no, at a hotel, where the Grinch reportedly got into a shouting match with someone in the plaid jacket. I assume he was the mayor of Whoville. <laughs> a hotel <laughs> worker intervened and then was shoved to the floor by someone dressed as a reindeer, then allegedly pummeled by the Grinch, who broke his watch and probably stole his snoozle phone, too. Police say the Grinch admitted to being the aggressor, which is kind of hard to deny when you're the Grinch. He was described, this will surprise you, Keith, uh -huh. drunk and angry. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine, Imagine that. that. Boy, prove that in court. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> someone said, you're a mean drunk, Mr. Grinch. <laughs> You're a mean drunk. And the reindeer was also arrested on suspicion of running over grandma. <laughs> <laughs> well, from our Huck's criminal mastermind desk comes the laziest bank robber of the week. 
Police in Omaha arrested a woman who allegedly sent a hold-up note to the bank teller from the drive through lane. <laughs> you are kidding me. Wait, I wish are you I serious? Was. This is actually, it happened in Omaha. You know, I'm surprised oh. that she didn't call Uber Eats and ask them to deliver the loot to her house. Yeah, oh, I, I mean, <sighs> wow. Anyway, finally, the symbol of a new year is a baby, and many families are going to be welcoming babies in 2023. But strange baby names aren't just for celebrities anymore. A baby name expert told Fox News that some of 2023's trending names, trending names, will include Caspian, Dutton, Majestic, Hawkins, Nova Ray, and Felix. Now, how did Felix get in there? I, that sounds, that's an actual name. Yeah, that's, that sounds pretty normal. Did you know that in Texas, it's illegal to give a baby a name that's more than 100 letters long? Thank God. I didn't know well, anything I, was illegal in I Texas. I was a little concerned. I mean, my new grandson, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious <laughs> Huckabee, barely wow. got in under the wire, just barely. <laughs> well, before you start calling me names, I think we're going to end this bit. But until next time, always remember, we read the news. Coming up, John Paul Mac Isaac shares the story a lot of powerful people didn't want you to know. Straight ahead on Huckabee. Welcome back, everybody. Let's give a big hand to the best band in all of Nashville, Tennessee, Trey Corley, and the Music City Connection. John Paul Mac Isaac was a computer repairman who found himself at the center of one of the biggest political scandals in modern history. A chance encounter with the son of President Joe Biden, who left the so-called laptop from hell at his repair shop. Well, this would change his life forever. He's got a brand new book to talk about it. It's called American Injustice, My Battle to Expose the Truth. And that's exactly what he's gonna do here tonight. Please welcome to the show, one of the most courageous people I've met in a long time. Welcome John Paul Mac Isaac. You are loved by this audience. A lot of people understand that you're just working at your shop one day in Delaware. Mm -hmm. Some guy comes in, drops off his laptop, says, it's broken, can you fix it? Did you have any idea who he was? Not at first. I'm legally blind. So when he came in, he, uh, he was a bit disheveled, and he... A you know, bit? A bit. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted me to recover data from his laptops. They okay. weren't repairs. Yeah. I mean, I, this wasn't something to fix. He just wanted the memories off these laptops. And, you know, I, it wasn't until I asked for his first name and his last name and his contact information that I realized who he was. When one of the laptops had a Bo Biden sticker on it, I was like, all right, this is, this is mm. who he was. But yeah. this is two weeks before his dad announced his candidacy. So to me, this is just some guy with, he's trying to get the memories off of these laptops. Yeah. And when you started getting those memory, because a lot of people wouldn't be able to do it. Obviously, you're pretty good at your job because mm -hmm. you could get it. In fact, that's the problem. You're too good at your job. You did get that stuff off the laptop. Mm -hmm. And there was some pretty crazy stuff on there. Yeah. Initially because I saw the Bo Biden sticker, I thought this was just Hunter trying to get his deceased brother's memories off the laptop. Yeah. It wasn't until the next day during the recovery and verification process that I realized that no, this was not Bo Biden's laptop, this is Hunter's and it's gross. I mean, there were things, and, and most of us have seen at least excerpts from the laptop, and it's shocking. It's him using drugs, it's him uh, engaging with prostitutes, it's him telling openly about the business deals that he's doing with the Chinese Communist Party and how his dad gets a, a cut of it. When you saw that kind of stuff, you turned it over to law enforcement originally, didn't you? Well, it's an occupational hazard to see pornography and other sensitive material yeah. on a laptop. I did not go to the FBI because of some crackhead with a gun. I went to the FBI because of the threats of national security 
the, the pay for play scheme being run out of the White House and the office of the vice president during the Obama administration, and how much the foreign our adversaries can leverage over this presidential candidate. So that's why I went to the FBI. And I'm sure the FBI immediately said, Thank you very much. We're going to get on top of this. We're going to make sure we get to the bottom of this. And boy, will we ever have an impact on this uh, person's life. That's what happened, right? Well, the, the first interaction with the FBI, I was too afraid. I was trying to protect my business and my, my person. Mm -hmm. I didn't want the world to know I existed. Yeah. So I sent my father, who was a retired colonel in the Air Force, to reach out to the FBI in Albuquerque. They kicked him out of his off, their office. They told him to lawyer up and don't talk about these things. So that was the last... Again, this is a colonel of the Air Force for 31 years. All he wanted was protection for his son. And the FBI, he described it as the most uh, humiliating moment of his entire life. There have been numerous reports that had the information on that laptop, laptop been disclosed prior to the election, it would have swung the election the other way. Mm -hmm. Big Tech conspired with the FBI. And to, to prevent this from ever being told, the New York Post was completely banned from Twitter and social media because they ran a story that every bit of it turned out to be true. Well, and the worst part is, is they, they replaced the truth with this Russian narrative. And So you're not a Russian no, spy? I, this is, if this is what the GSU or the KGB is putting out <laughs> these days, then, then I don't think we have anything to worry about. But, uh, <laughs> now, if they, had said, if they had said Scotland was going to try to over uh, affect the election and yeah. overturn it, then, then maybe they would have had a leg to stand on. But I think this is, this is why I'm going after them in my lawsuit. You know, everybody that decided to label my actions Russian disinformation, ergo basically saying I colluded with a foreign power to affect an election, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to hold them accountable. And you're suing some people like CNN and Adam Schiff. Mm -hmm. uh, Hunter Biden, the campaign to elect Joe Biden and Politico. Fantastic. I hope you have great lawyers. Well, you know what? It, it's really not about you. John Paul, this is about every American who wants to know the truth about those who are elected to public office and to the people who are supposed to be in law enforcement protecting all of us. These lawsuits are critically important. And, and on behalf of, I think, a lot of Americans, I sure hope you win them. Well, this isn't something I've, I've come to terms with this a long time ago. This isn't something I'm supposed to win. This is something they're supposed to lose. Mm. And I'm going to try to hold them accountable and I'm hoping we'll have a Speaker of the House that'll allow Congress to hold them accountable. Because if uh, something happens to me before Congress can do their job, I'm gonna haunt that building. Good for you. We'll be right there with you. It's an amazing story. John Paul, I think we all owe you a debt of gratitude for the courage to reach out and try to get the truth out. And that's all in the world you were trying to do and yet still trying to do it. This book, which is John Paul, Mac Isaac's story, American Injustice, is sold wherever books are sold. We have a link where you can find it online. I hope you'll get a copy of it and read it. It'll open your eyes as to what this man has been through simply trying to get our own government to recognize absolute ironclad evidence of corruption. Now, speaking of laptops, Keith's got some stuff on his. He's got all the goods on who's coming up. He'll share it with us right now. Well, mm. you will not believe your eyes when master illusionist Joel Myers performs. It's next on Huckabee. TV and get your very own Made in the USA Huckabee mugs, t-shirts, and more. Are you ready for some magic? I know you are because Joel Myers has performed on America's Got Talent. Penn and Teller fool us, and he's starred on Masters of Illusion. He believes that nothing is impossible. And here to prove it, please welcome Master Illusionist Joel Myers. What is going on, guys? My name is Joel Myers. I'm stoked to be here this evening. Before I even start, I want to uh, point something out. 
One of the coolest things about what I do is that it's not just about me. Throughout the experience, I get people involved with everything that I'm doing. And right now is no exception. I can't think of anybody better than Governor Huckabee himself. Governor, would you come join me? I'm going to give him a big hand. Right over here, sir. Okay. Right over here. Governor, personal question. Um, yes. I want to show you how pickpocketing works. Can I borrow your cell phone first? Uh, yes, I do Fantastic. happen to have it with me. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Is. So perfect. Yes, that was the easiest pickpocketing I've ever done. <laughs> it's perfect. I may regret this. I'm going to try and find okay. your. Uh, I'm going to try and find your uh, flashlight here. Okay. Perfect. Just like this. Yeah. Now, would you actually film this, Governor, with uh, with my phone here? The, <laughs> okay. Uh, you just right. got to hit record. It's ready to go. Let me get it I'm going to do this on three, mode. so just uh, just watch the phone. Is it recording? It is now. Ready? One, two, three. <sighs> See it disappear? That's a problem. <laughs> we just had the guy that found Hunter's laptop, now, and now, you've lost yeah. my phone. When it disappears, <laughs> when it... <laughs> when it disappears, it actually goes somewhere. And what you're happened? Actually, you're actually holding it now, Governor. This is, this is my phone. This is my, this is my phone. It really is. Wow. Things get crazier as we go. I so. am stepping back. <laughs> I don't know. How in the world did you do that? I'm so I'm going to show you. I'm going to okay. show you. Because what, yeah. I, what I love about what I do is I do it right in people's hands. Yes, you did. So literally, here, well, can you set that over? We'll set that over okay. here. We'll get back to the phone in a second. But first. Uh, keep an eye on I, it. Yeah, keep an eye on it. But uh, what, what we're going to do is um, I really want to put this, do this in your hands. So first, hold okay. your hands up like this. All right. Um, maybe bring our hands down like this. Now, Governor, just say for me, um, actually, maybe just bring them up just a bit. Oh, like, like that? Down like this, palms down. Okay. okay. Bring them up a little bit like this. All right. Are you, uh, just name right or left, up to you. Left. Left. Okay, yeah. so drop your right hand. Okay. Make a fist with your uh, left hand that you okay. said left. Bring your right. fist out like this. Okay. Watch me. Maybe face uh, face the audience here for just a second. Yeah, perfect. Watch me. I'm going to draw something first, and then you're going to draw something. I'll draw something first. Okay. I'll draw a little X here in my hand. Am I supposed to see what you're drawing? Yeah, you can see it. It's oh, a little okay. X. It's an X. See the X. Everybody see like the X? That? I'll do this right. really slow. Watch. Watch the X. Okay. Really slow. X right here. I'll make sure it's fine. Right. Watch. If I take the X and I pull it like this, I'll actually remove it. You see it go? I, okay, I think cool. I know where this better. is going. It gets going. better. Watch. Watch the X. I think I know where it's going. Do you feel anything? No. Open your hand like this, Governor. <laughs> Look, there was nothing in my hand. Smudge now. <laughs> it's a smudge. So now. here's the deal. Okay. So uh, that was me drawing something. Now I want you to draw something, okay? But uh -huh. you're not, you're not going to draw anything on the hand. <laughs> I've got. Uh, I've got a stack of paper How here. Did get on there. They, uh, it's, uh, put it uh, put it underneath your pillow, and tomorrow I'll be there. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> whoa. Okay. <laughs> Check it out. I got a stack of paper. <laughs> it's going downhill. All right. Okay. I got a stack of paper. They're just blank pieces of paper. They almost uh, they almost look like index cards. They could almost look like playing cards. They They're do. not. They're just uh, blank pieces of paper. In fact, Governor, I want you to check those out. Make okay. sure they're exactly what they appear to be. They're just blank pieces of paper. Yeah. Yeah, they'd be great note cards. Yeah, yeah, they would, right? Yeah. So here's the deal. Because those are all blank, we have unlimited possibilities. I want okay. you to take one out, any one you want, totally up to you. Now, you're going to draw something. Okay. That's perfect. Yes, yeah, so I'll cap it here. That's perfect. Show everybody it's just blank card, blank, yeah, blank card. piece of paper. Draw whatever you want. You could draw a self-portrait. I'll take the rest of them. Okay. You can draw a self-portrait. You can draw uh, a, a picture of somebody. You can draw your name, whatever you want. But make sure it's kind of filling out the whole thing. Yeah, maybe, maybe you're... Oh, that's good. That's good. What, is that, that artistic? Is that you? No, it's Keith. <laughs> it's Keith. It's a picture of Keith. It does look. Can I got a feeling I'm like, about to disappear. I don't know. I don't know. See? <laughs> nice you, knowing you, Keith. It looks Keith's like name him. down there. It's supposed yeah, to be I'll Keith, put maybe. Keith. The ears, yeah. yeah. Oh, here's the deal. So okay. here's, the, here's the plan. Now that that uh, card is totally unique, I can do whatever I want hmm. with it. I'll show you what I mean. We'll get a close-up on this. You see Keith's card there. It's going to go mm -hmm. from the top in the middle like this. Here's the weird part. Whenever I snap like this, see, it comes back to the top. Now, that's, that's cool. Normally, at this point, a magician would stop there because magicians have two really big rules. First yeah. really big rule is you never tell people how the trick is done. Everybody knows that one. But the second big rule is you never repeat the same trick more than once. Okay. If you repeat, repeat the same trick more than once, they say <laughs> once is a trick, twice is a lesson. To make this Keith card even more unique, I'm going to do what's called putting a <laughs> crimp in it. It's where I put a big bend in it, Governor, like this. Okay. Big bend oh. in it. So now, right, keep, keep me on the outro over there. That was good. Watch, the bent card goes from here yeah. to in the middle. Now you really see it, right? Don't look you away, because do. this yeah. is where it gets crazy. Watch that bent card. I'm watching. See, all I have to do is just snap. Do you see the bent card come all the way up just like that? 
I just saw that happen. I just saw that. I am a foot away. Now, the last part is the craziest part. Remember, I wanted to bring this full circle. Yeah. So I have an idea. Governor, could I? We'll take that. We'll stick okay. that one back in here. Here's the plan. I want right. to make this vanish right here. I'm going to show you how you do it. Make it vanish. It's going to appear in your hand. Okay. That's the plan. But we'll do it underneath the, uh, the phone. So put your hand out flat. Okay. It's going to go from here to underneath the phone, okay? So All hold right. it over just a little bit, just like that. That's perfect. From okay. here to underneath. Nobody's questioning me. Everybody's like, <laughs> Keith's like, uh, yeah, right, Harry yeah. Potter. Check it out. Watch the... Uh, Watch the Keith card. We'll take it from right here. I'll do this super slow. Watch the Keith card. If I take it and I shake it, you'll actually see it change. Watch it change. You see it go? See it vanish just like that? It's gone. It's not even in the pack of paper anymore. Governor, did I touch that phone at all? No. Did you feel anything? No. Lift up the phone. See if it's there. Is it there? I'm almost afraid to look. Is it there? No. That would have been awesome. Yeah, oh that would have been <laughs> That is so good. Keith, what a freak. <laughs> Wait a second. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's not under the phone. It's, no, it's not. It's inside the phone. No way. Remember, we did one Keith, one Keith card just like this. Yeah. Could you could you hold those? Sure. Up? Watch the uh, watch the phone there. Can you see in the screen there? There's a folded up card in the screen. Here's the weird part. When I pull it, you'll actually see it come out. <laughs> just like that. But we know there's only one. Unbelievable. <laughs> Joel, Thank that you so is much, amazing. Sir. Thank you very much for Keith. One of the most incredible magic acts I've ever seen. If you want more amazing videos of Joel Myers' tour dates, he's got a tour just starting, social links, have him come to your community, visit Huckabee.tv, we'll connect you. Keith, I have no idea how he did all that stuff. But maybe you got some magic in your sleeve. Tell us about what's coming up. I'm feeling some real job security right now. Well, it's the magic of great soul music from rising star Kim Tibbs. Coming up next on Huckabee. Join Huckabee next week for special guest Carrie Lake and singer-songwriter Tasha Layton. Well, the debut album by the nice musical guest produced seven number one hits on the UK soul chart. That's a pretty big deal. Her new album is called The Science of Completion, Volume 1. It stayed at number one on that chart for five weeks. Please welcome Kim Tibbs. <laughs> Kim, we are so glad to have you here. Tell the story of how you and Trey Corley happened to bump into each other that led to your being here tonight. The Tar Center is always going to pull musicians. And this particular day, I was dressed down. I was just minding my own business. He's dressed down, but he smells great. I will say that. <laughs> Not the tray we know. <laughs> <laughs> so he just started talking about the vintage Fender Rhodes, and instantly my ears perked up. And I was like, what year was it? And it was like a car, you know? So yeah. he pulls his studio out. I show him my studio. He was like, oh, oh my God. And so from that point, we exchanged our names. We kind of talked a little bit about who we were, what we did. And he says, well, let me hear some of your music. So I said, well, here's my link tree. This is what my current album is. It's doing X, Y, and Z. And I hope you like it. And I think within five minutes of our meeting, he was saying, oh my gosh, your music is incredible. So that's really what happened. Ran into a guitar center. Today, when we got to hear you in rehearsal, I think all of us agreed. Oh. Trey actually was right for once. This is really, <laughs> this is a big moment. You, you. you have had such an incredible opportunity to create music. You write it, you pr help produce it, you put it together. Uh, not many people can run the full spectrum of that. I think you've got one of your albums. <gasps> Do you? I brought you a late Christmas present. For me, yes. huh? This is my oh. first album. The Kim Beautiful. album, the debut. Thank you. And then this is a special limited edition copy of my album. In vinyl, which in vinyl. I love. 
Double love vinyl. vinyl, and it's red, and I have a special little, well, I would open it for you. I have a special little insert for Beautiful. you. Beautiful. This is a wonderful and Christmas gift. If I can get it. Post-Christmas. I've got one for you, by the oh, way, while yay. you're digging that out. So this is for Governor. This is, oh, <laughs> that's a beautiful photo and signed. Yes. This is my book. I didn't write it. Willie <laughs> Mosley wrote it, but it's all about the guitars <laughs> in my collection. Yes. And since you are a master musician, oh. we'll trade. We'll I'll trade. This is our late present. Oh, thank, thank you, thank Kim. You. What a nice <laughs> post-Christmas <laughs> gift. All right, Keith. Kim is going to get ready to perform, and I can't wait for you to hear her. It, she will blow you away. Right now, I want you just to make sure you tell our viewers how they can hear more of her fantastic music, which they are going to want to do. Just go to Huckabee.tv to find her tour schedule, recordings, and more. You can also watch an exclusive performance of the song Miracles. Now, performing her hit, where would I be without you with Trey Corley and the Music City Connection and Mike on bass? Here's Kim Tibbs. <laughs> 